good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're glad to have each and every one of you on this first Sunday of June as we gather together as God's wonderful people to lift up the name of Jesus Christ, that name that's above all names. We gather together as God's wonderful people to fellowship one with another, to pray for one another, to lift up one another, to make that difference in one another's lives. We gather this morning as God's wonderful people to lift up the name of Jesus Christ and his name. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We gather this morning to worship. Hymn number 133, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. This morning, as we go to the Lord in prayer, we want to remember Don. He had surgery this past week. He had a tube in, placed in his eye for, to drain, to keep the pressure down. And uh, he wasn't able to be able to be here today. And so uh, Diane and uh, the choir is on Get Us Through. And then Marion had hernia surgery this week, and so uh, we asked the Lord to be with Don and be with Marion and watch over them and bring about healing in their lives. Uh, do you have someone that you would like for us to lift up today? We want to pray for our annual conference begins this afternoon at 2 o'clock with the clergy session. And then tonight at 7 o'clock will be the ordination service. And then tomorrow will be the business section. And then tomorrow afternoon the appointments will be uh, announced. Uh, we haven't heard anything from the district superintendent since the charge conference. So as uh, far as I know, we'll be back uh, uh, for another year, which will be number 20. I served 13 years and then took two years off, and now this will be my seventh year back with you. And I appreciate the opportunity to serve you and to be a part of God's wonderful kingdom as we continue to reach out to make a difference in this community and the world around about us. And we pray for every minister and every situation. Uh, the 
One difference that's going to take place is Trinity Church uh, will be placed with into the Greenwood District and will go with Central Lawrence and Central Lawrence and Trinity will become a charge. So uh, that's the only change I know or, uh, that's taking a place in this community. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before your throne of grace this morning, Heavenly Father, we come thanking, thanking you for all that you have done for each and every one of us. Lord, we thank you for your love and your concern for each and every one of your precious children. Lord, we thank you for your goodness and for your mercy. Lord, we thank you for that wonderful grace, Heavenly Father, that you have bestowed upon us. Heavenly Father, thank you for being with us in such a mighty way. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who gives us that hope for each day and he gives us life and he gives it to us so abundantly and he gives us that assurance that he will never leave us nor forsake us but that he will be with us even unto the end. Thank you for that assurance of eternal life knowing that your son Jesus Christ lives and dwells in each and every one of our hearts, we shall spend all of eternity with thee. And while we're here on this earth, we know that he will be with us even unto the end. Heavenly Father, we thank you for that precious Holy Spirit that comes to fill each and every one of our hearts to guide us, to direct us in all the ways that you would have us to go, that we might be drawn closer to you and closer to one another, that we might love one another as you have loved us. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those that are in need of your touch today. Lord, for those that have surgery, we ask you to watch over them, continue to walk with them. And Heavenly Father, those families that are bereaved, we ask that you continue to be with each and every one of them as you encircle them with your loving arms as you hold them close during these days. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for each and every one of these precious lives that are gathered here today. Heavenly Father, you know each and every one of our hearts. Lord, you know our struggles. You know our ups and our downs. Lord, you know what each and every one of us are going through. Lord, we just simply ask for your presence in the midst of each and every one of our lives as we walk by faith and not by sight. <laughs> Heavenly Father, May your spirit continue to move within each and every one of us. And Heavenly Father, watch over this congregation as we continue to be the light in the midst of the darkness, that we might be that word of hope during that time of despair. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, and for the prayer that he prayed on many occasions. He taught his disciples to pray, and we pray this morning as your children. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Hymn number 452, My Faith Looks Up to Thee. Our Psalter reading is found on page 754. We're reading from the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord makes me lie down in the green pasture. He leads me beside the still waters and he restores my life. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, with your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. By way of announcement, I'd like to share several different cards with you this morning. It says, Dear Dials Church family, thank you for thinking of me in this special time in my life. I will enjoy using the Bible Promise Book and the $20 Target gift card and thinking of y'all when I use them. 
thank you again, love Haley. And then to my church family, thank you so much for honoring me for my graduation with the wonderful gift and delicious food. Thank you with love, Kaylee Raber. And then I have the announcements for the graduation for Haley. The senior class of Clinton High School announced the commencement exercise Friday evening, June the 18th, 2021 at seven o'clock at Clinton High School Gymnasium. And then we have a card from Brenda and family. Somehow just saying thank you doesn't seem like enough, but I hope y'all know how much your kindness has meant to me. Thank you to our church family for all your thoughts and prayers and kindness. Frances loved her church family, Brenda and family. Are there any other announcements that we need to make today? We started Sunday school back today. If you were not here, uh, just want to let you know that Sunday school is at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning, and we love to have each and every one of you to come and participate in Sunday school. So we have started back with the Sunday school as of now. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for this day. Thank you for the blessings of the day, and thank you for each and every gift that's been given this day, Lord. And Heavenly Father, may those gifts be used for the uplifting of your kingdom as we make a difference in this community and the world around about us. Heavenly Father, we ask now that you might bless those that continue to give, those that make a difference in this community. And Heavenly Father, help us to be that light in the midst of the darkness, that we might continue to reach out and love to those around about us, to let people know that we care. And Heavenly Father, we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand for the doxology?
reading this morning from 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, verses 6 through 10. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that when we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willingly rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body. According to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. In the Gospel of Mark, the fourth chapter, beginning with verse 26, Jesus also said, This is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces the grain, first the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it, because the harvest has come. Again, he said, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like, or what parable shall we use to describe it? It's like a mustard seed, which is the smallest seed you plant in the ground. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants with such big branches that the birds of the air can perch in its shade. With many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable, but when he was alone, with his own disciples, he explained to them everything. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for the scripture and for the message that you have given unto me this day as I break the bread of life to your wonderful people. Heavenly Father, may every word that flow from my lips be pleasing unto you. And Heavenly Father, these your precious children who have come to hear the bread of life. Heavenly Father, may their hearts and meditation thereof be pleasing unto you. Heavenly Father, we ask for the anointing of every word that is spoken and every word that is received. We ask it this morning in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior. Amen. Our subject today is, For we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. For one day, we will stand before the judgment seat of Christ and he will judge us according to that which is good and that which is bad. We walk by faith and not by sight. Why do we walk by faith and not by sight? Because we do not know what the future holds because we do not know what may happen today or tomorrow or the next day. When we, with Apostle Paul, he did not know whether he would be shipwrecked, whether he would be in jail in Corinth, of Philippi, or Ephesus, or Rome. Apostle Paul didn't know if he would be before the religious leaders or if he would be beaten by some crowd of people 
But what Apostle Paul knew was that he had put his faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And no matter what would come his way, he would keep that faith in Jesus Christ. And that he would preach the gospel, the message of the cross to the people. And Apostle Paul was true to his word. And so it is with us this morning. We do not know what the future may hold. We do not know what may happen in any of our lives. When we go to the doctor the next time, what will he say to us? Do you have cancer? Could we have heart problems? Could we have kidney problems? What will he say to us? And what about our children? Things happen to them, and it affects us. What about our grandchildren? When things happen to them, it affects us as well. We just don't know what the future holds. And so we walk by faith rather than by sight. A young girl by the name of Carla was learning to ski. And so she was on the beginner slope and, and she kept falling down and, and she would get up and finally she got to where she could stand up pretty good. And so she thought she would move over just a little ways to what they call the big hill. And so when she moved over to the big hill, it didn't take her long to realize that she had made a mistake, but she couldn't stop. And there she was going down the hill wide open, hollering, get out of the way, get out of the way, because she didn't know what else to do. And there ahead of her was the fence and the lodge. And all of a sudden she dodged the fence, but she hit the lodge. She got up battered and bruised, and she walked inside the lodge, and there was her twin sister just laughing away. She said, what in the world are you laughing about? She said, well, you aren't seen that idiot come down the hill and hit the side of the lodge. Well, folks, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Anything could happen in our lives. And since we don't know what's going to happen, we walk by faith and not by sight. But when you and I walk by faith and we put our trust in Jesus Christ, we can have that assurance of knowing that he will be with us all the way. For he has promised us that he would never leave us nor forsake us he would be with us even unto the end. This morning for our Psalter reading, we read the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leadeth me to green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my life. You see, the sheep trust the good shepherd because they know his voice. And he knows them by name. And he leads them by the still waters because they know that if they get out into the rough water, the weight of their wool will take them under and they will drown. 
And so the shepherd leads them by the still waters. He leads them to green pastures because the sheep is so dumb that the sheep will eat all the grass around them and then the sheep doesn't have enough sense to go to another place to eat. And so the shepherd leads them to the green pastures so that they will be taken care of. The shepherd is willing to lay down his life for those sheep and take care of those sheep. He will fight the thief and the bear and the lion in order to protect the sheep. And so when you and I put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, he is the good shepherd. He will take care of us. He will lead us beside the still waters. He will lead us to green pastures. He will take care of our daily needs, our daily bread. He will provide. He will be with us even until the end. Jesus says the kingdom of God is like a seed that's planted in the ground. We look at it, we watch it grow, but we don't, don't know how it grows. We don't know how it germinates. We just simply know that we scattered the seed and they begin to grow and then comes the fruit. And then when the fruit is ripe, we gather the fruit. The kingdom of God and our faith is like that of a mustard seed Every one of us is given a small portion, but when it is planted, it brings forth a tree that is big enough to provide for the birds to have a resting place. Our faith is the same way as it is with that plant. When we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Several months ago, Marlene wanted a, a pepper plant, a bell pepper plant. So I went to Walmart and I paid three dollars and a half for a pepper plant. I paid fifteen dollars for the, the container and five dollars for the soil. And so for a couple of weeks, she kept that pepper plant in the house there to keep it from being killed by the frost. But then she put that pepper plant, we put that pepper plant into the container and then we placed it out on the back deck. Now that pepper plant is two feet tall and it has somewhere between 15 and 20 bell peppers on it. Five of them is pretty big. But you see, we didn't have anything to do with it except put it in the soil and put a little bit of miracle grow from time to time. That's the way our faith is. It, it, it continues to grow. We don't know how it grows, but it grows and it brings forth fruit. This year has been a, a tough year when it comes to the blueberries. In the month of April, we had four different frosts. Each one of those frosts took away part of the fruit. But I still have enough faith and trust in Jesus Christ that somehow or another, through it all, there's going to be enough blueberries to take care of the farmer's market. There's going to be enough blueberries to take care of the people that come to pick, and that I have enough faith that everybody in the church that wants a free gallon will be able to get it. This past Monday, as I was down there weeding around the plants, I noticed the plant that this laid out still had blooms on it. Ordinarily, you don't have blooms 
past the 1st of May. Here it is, the 1st of June, and those blueberry plants are, are trying to bloom. There was five blooms on it. I went back yesterday and to look at those blooms, and there's four berries and one bloom still on the plant. Even the plant is still trying to make fruit. That's the way the Lord works with our faith. When we put our faith and trust in Him. How do we put our faith and trust in Him? There are several different commercials on television that pulls at my heart. When I see the Shriners Hospital and I see those children born without legs or arms with all different kinds of problems, it pulls at my heart string. And then when I see the, the, the one with St. Jude and those children dying with cancer, still one in five children with cancer die. And then when I see that mercy ship coming in and all those people backed up waiting, hoping to be able to get an operation that will make a difference in those children's lives. But a cancer doctor wrote about her experience dealing with dying children and their family. And she talked about the emotions of the family. And then she talked about this particular five-year-old boy that was dying with cancer. And the parents was having such difficulty with it. They were afraid, they were fearful. They were upset with life that they were losing their little five-year-old boy. In his last day on earth, he said to his mom and dad, you don't have to worry about me. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to fear because Jesus came to see me. And Jesus told me everything was going to be okay, that he was going to take care of me, that I didn't need to fear or be afraid. This morning we come with that same childlike faith because, you see, trust and mistrust is, is a learned behavior. And as a child, if we learn to trust, then as adults, we will also trust. But if during our childhood, if we learn to distrust people because of a situation, then as adults, it's hard to deal with trust. And so it's important for us to have that childlike faith that we will put our trust in Jesus Christ and we will walk by faith and not by sight. When we try to walk by sight, we will never become what God wants us to become. It will hinder us from doing what the Lord wants us to do. And so this morning we need to learn to lean on Jesus, safe and secure from all alarm, leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus. This morning we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ and we walk by faith and not by sight. Our closing hymn, 337, only trust. First and last verse as we sing together.
Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can trust you, that you will be with us even unto the end. Heavenly Father, sometimes it's difficult to walk by faith because we care so much about those that we love. And when situations happen, we have a tendency to look at the situation rather than look at you. Heavenly Father, help us to be able to walk by faith and not by sight. Heavenly Father, continue to touch each and every one of these. And Heavenly Father, hold each and every one of these close during these days. Watch over them in a mighty way. We ask it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.